the setups that we had, we were in this a real j jailhouse, which is abandoned, but um, very spooky environment. Mm -hmm. Giving it a real sort of stark uh, quality, um, almost a noir kind of a quality to it that, that matches the game. Well, uh, what we were trying to do, uh, this is a commercial for uh, Biohazard 2, but we wanted it to look like a movie, so we basically wanted to produce it very much like a movie instead of uh, like, a, like a commercial shoot. It's fabulous. I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I love making the movies, and it's, yeah. it's great to, that there's a game which is, you know, it's like a flashback to, to that genre and it's you know I can feel maybe a little bit like I had some influence on it and, and so I feel very uh, flattered you know and uh, it was just like a small motion picture shoot with extras playing the zombies and a few people that were experienced playing the zombies and the actors Brad Renfro and uh, Adriana had have experience it was like working with a regular cast oh wow yes some chick player you know bad badass chick player <laughs> goes and gets to shoot all these zombies and stuff and she's just the superhero so uh, I mean for aesthetic just for a, a you know photographic aesthetic and so Peter and I just talked about keeping it clean and making it look, you know, like old, old Hollywood almost. And that's pretty much the way. Behind a character, in front of a character, it's, it sometimes gets tricky lighting-wise because you want to keep it spooky, you want to keep it dark, but there's, you know, particularly with any sort of uh, blood effect or anything like that, you have to have enough light there to so the audience knows really what's happening, but keep it spooky at the same time. Screaming Mad George was fabulous. I mean, the zombies, uh, he made some really terrific zombies for us. I just wish we could have given them more screen time. Well, now, zombie is something that is very, uh, in a way, it's so overdone. And uh, I usually tend to uh, do something that is more in a surreal stage. So, and then, like, you know, I'm trying to make something very different from anybody who's done the same genre. But in the sense of zombie, is it very difficult to try to put something very, you know, surrealistic imagery thing going on? Because then it really cuts off from the original, you know, point. <laughs> Right, so you know, I just thought, okay, well, you know, we should just do it, make the really good zombies. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to do some different thing because they want a zombie and this is that. Right, so you know, I just thought, okay, well, you know, we should just do it, make the really good zombies. When I grew up uh, on horror movies, the horror movies of the 40s and early 50s, zombies were always this sort of lower blue collar monster you know and uh, they had they were just vampiric they were hungry for human flesh or blood or both and uh, that's really their only motivation they're not particularly evil they just behave the way a herd of animals might behave or herd, you know hyenas or that's what you have to watch out for I mean they're just driven
Well, you know, it's funny when you get a bunch of zombies in a room. I find you know, all the times that I've worked with zombies, if I make any physical move or talk, then all of a sudden they all do. And you have 40 zombies doing exactly the same thing. Which is, so I generally let them invent their own uh, moves, you know, what, how they want to behave, basically just to help them. It's, it doesn't it kind of reflect on I kind of like it because it's a real big chain coming from a spiritual hero to an actual literal hero it's you know it's it's it, it's also very fun material but um it's 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 good because it's a good little switch around I don't know why but it pretty much left it up to me you know. I might be able to handle it I don't know you also like the naturality of it you know I mean, Brad was interested in the character, and even though it's a very short uh, piece, he, he was interested in, you know, knowing how to handle the guns. In my stories, the, the people that are, that are trapped by them or that, are, that get in trouble are people who just can't either handle it or can't communicate uh, properly with each other to, you know, to, to form a plan to... to around this problem and so yeah we're good that's all right they're the they don't have a lot of power they move slowly and they're, you can defeat them easily one at a time um, but when there's enough of them and when you're not very organized yourself or your group can't communicate or whatever you know they're gonna get you and that that's the those are thematically what I've always worked with
Feed me.